Yeah, I would, I would definitely think so. Uh, but we will see. As we have spawning up in the top right, it is the Frenchman. The one of the progenitors, the creators of the baguette style of Protoss. It is Petit Drogo. And his opponent in the top left from Germany. We have none other than a Lembo. One of Europe's greatest Zerks. It's kind of unfortunate though, being a Zerk player, I guess, at this level in Europe, because <laughs> Yeah, guys like Sarah, guys like Reyna right above you. If they uh, were not around, I think Lambo would get a lot of cheers from everybody at uh, every tournament he goes to. Now, obviously, he still does. But, uh, yeah, those two, they do tend to steal the spotlight a little bit. They cast a very long shadow. I think especially Cyril. Anyone would agree that uh, when you're the... Yeah, when, when you're compared to Cyril, it doesn't matter how good of a player you are. Yeah. You're, you're never going to look as good as you actually are. But with all that being said, Lambo has been a kind of leader uh, of Zerg. He has kind of, you know, dictated a little bit of the evolution of the Zerg meta in Europe. in those With those European Zergs, he's kind of led the charge. It's been really cool. Yeah. He's even done some coaching as well with top-level players, not just... Uh... You know, when he's uh, playing events, but also yeah, whenever he's, for example, eliminated out of a tournament, he is definitely the one that a lot of people will seek counsel from. So he knows the game extremely well. He's a very intelligent player for sure. And I think that combined with the fact that Drogo is yeah, just not playing the game as much as he once used to, I feel like it's going to be an uphill battle here for the French Protoss. But I'm certainly excited to find out. So we do find ourselves on Ghost River in game number one now. We talked about the maps at length, I don't really want to discuss it all the way once more, but this map has one big issue for Zerk, and that is that there's only one third base option. Mm. So, yeah. sometimes that leads towards like a really quick lair, which is what we saw some of yesterday. Lambo is just going to give it a try though, see if we can grab this, but if the Adept, like, you can pylon block here and then send the Adept in, and it's actually quite difficult to get the third base secured. Yeah, it can be, it can be quite a hassle. Uh, Lambo did build the four lings. He kept, he actually kept two of them hidden. It makes me wonder if he was maybe trying to bait out that pylon to be like, oh, I can, I can DPS it down. But mm -hmm. on a map like Ghost River, if he was playing that kind of gambit, it, it does feel a little bit like, well, you're playing with fire a little bit. I'm sure he would know the timing, so I wouldn't, wouldn't even want to really question that. But it's, it's the kind of thing where it definitely makes things a little bit uncomfortable. So mm -hmm. far, first Adept ah, will get deflected, only getting a single link kill. Good saves from Lambo. Absolutely. In the meantime, by the way, it's a Void Ray first. Mm. Okay. Void Ray first always, or Void Ray first, rather, not F Void Ray first. Anyways, uh, <laughs> it always indicates to me that he's trying to hide something, right? This is always screaming to me, at least, that Protoss wants to go for something cheeky. Now, they really don't have to, but it always does feel like. If you could choose between a Phoenix or an Oracle or a Void Ray, right? You should probably go mm. Oracle every time and Phoenix, yeah, uh, pretty solid too. But the Void Ray is not usually the best all-round choice. Now, of course, it does have a bunch of benefits. It can deny Overlord Scouts really confidently. And I guess on this map, I mean, the air-to-air -air rush distance is incredibly short. If you can get another Overlord, it might actually be totally fine. I was just yeah. going to say w where the Void Ray really feels oh. great is when you find two overlords and one of them went down before the void ray was scouted so lambo didn't know he needed to keep that or that uh, void ray back or that blah, 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 overlord back <laughs> behind us it is going to be a very quick second stargate and a fleet beacon we do see lambo though getting the jump on these adepts and that should allow him to deny this third base for a little bit of time but it's already late this is already a very late third base. You mentioned in the previous series that usually it's around 345 to 350. And yep. if you don't see a Nexus by the 445 to close to five minute mark, you've got to be thinking, like, alarm bells have to be ringing. Yes, 100%. Like, you see a Void Ray first and the delayed third base. You can't scout what's going on inside of the base, but it's got to be something weird, right? So, yeah. do we have a lair started up yet, by the way? We do not, and that really does slow this down here quite a bit for the Zerk, because it's a Tempest rush. Yes. Drogo here is rushing out Tempest. Now, 
Once he can go up to about five of them, he can start practically one-shotting everything. He just needs to point his... Oh, getting the council? Okay, oh, that's the council. nice. That would be huge. I thought for a second it was going to be uh, a kill on that base, but... He's hiding them. Yeah, he wants to just get as many of them as possible, and... It is a good map for it. Yes. I just am not sure if it's the greatest strategy against one of Europe's best Zergs, but... Without a Spire, you can't really shut these units down, and a Spire is minutes away. Well, the thing about this is that with the Void Ray, this looks like it could have been a charge lot all in, which is what Ooh. caused Lambo to build that early Roach Warren and now to go for a bunch of Roaches. And now these Tempests are going to show up. They're going to start clicking down drones. <laughs> this is this is pretty nasty to deal with. Now, the Tempests are pretty flimsy, but as they get into the corner, they will be able to harass two separate bases. This is so nasty right now. The only thing that's missing is actually an Oracle. Yes. He does not have vision of these queens, so the Tempests are one of the few StarCraft units that can shoot away further than they can see. It is a bit of an issue you run into. Now, he really needs a Spire. A Spire is basically a necessity in order to counter yes. these units reliably. Hydras are not a good option here. We have, okay, plus one together with Blink on the back of it. Hmm. Even with, though, killing a bunch of these drones and maybe getting a queen or two, it's still such a late third nexus for Protoss, right? So it's not like economically he's really in a good spot here when he kills a bunch of those workers. I think he can just replace any lost workers here as Lambo and wait until the Spire is done. Now, the Lair and the Spire do take ages to finish, but he should oh. get there eventually. Oh, don't, 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 don't lose a oh, no, Tempest no. to a queen. Oh, wow. Okay, he's he's keeping them just barely alive. Will overstay a little bit. Eh, there's, that, there's that quick acceleration that was buffed a few patches ago coming in to help that Tempest get out of harm's way. Honestly, this is pretty darn good damage. Mm -hmm. It's like Lambo has not yet taken a fourth base. He's got a drone on location for that. He has droned on, but he's got the Spire about to complete. But the transition in towards Blink Stalkers is nearly done. And I think Drogo is just going to try and absolutely smash smash yep. through Lambo with a big Blink Stalker all in. I don't think he had vision of the Spire at any point. Ooh, Void Ray over here. Okay, this is actually really quite nice. I would oh. love to see a recall on those Tempests in the top left. If he gets a kill on this base and this transitions towards Mass Stalker, it's going to be really tricky. I mean, plus one is only just now starting up for the Zerg Missile. Yeah going to be really difficult for Lambo to hold, I think, a big stalker push. Well, and for me, the more important thing is that he doesn't have road speed. Yeah. He doesn't have road speed. He doesn't have a whole lot of creep. This looks so nice right now for Drogo. Lambo is in a ton of trouble. He droned up to 80, and he can't actually even make use of most of them because his fourth base was denied again. Drogo is going to have a really nice position from which to attack. Oh, and he's going to oh. go after the Spire and will be able to down it in three volleys. I mean, there's not that many Corruptors. There's eight of them in total. If the Stalkers kill one or two, I've got a feeling... Well, unless the Tempest just fight the Queen straight up. Okay. Got a feeling maybe the Tempest could get some more value moving forward. I. This is still a fight that is taking place on Creep. It's not... Yeah, the Tempests don't even matter at this point. There's just too many Stalkers. I, I think mm. I think Drogo's going to do it right here, right now. Lambo's going to be forced to pull the drones into the fight, but there are so few Roaches and Ravagers in the actual fight. Roach speed will complete now, but Drogo's timing... Oh my goodness, he came ready to play. <laughs> great build for the map, and honestly, great great execution too. Yeah, really lovely work right here by the French Protos. GG is called, it's Drogo who wins game number one. Very fun, man. The new maps, I, I mean, I'm gonna keep bringing them up, but they're delivering. This is not something you would really do on any other map, I don't think, but the distance and the way that the map is laid out, especially the distance between the naturals, just, yeah, really lends itself for a strategy like this. Very cool stuff right here from Drogo. I think the vast majority of people have their money right here on Lambo, but it's, yeah, it's Drogo here who is now leading this series 1-0. to zero. Yes, yes it is. I was not expecting this, and I think a lot of people, like you said, are probably not expecting this either. This is a this is a pretty wild turn of events already. Damn. Yeah. Uh we are gonna see Site Delta as map number two. But Lambo's he's gotta be feeling a little bit rocked back on his heels right now. This is 
this is a very uncomfortable position for him to be in because yeah he he is playing full time like you said yes. and going down 1-0 to a player that you in your head are probably like cuz cuz even though Drogo it's the the skill doesn't disappear you're still yeah. like oh man I, I just got like I'm down 1-0 against a retired player that that's that can be what plays in your head after a map like that the big thing is you just got to be like okay I got caught off guard the build was good it's a weird map. He did an mm -hmm. all-in behind it. Forget it and move on to game two. Yeah, Lembo definitely can be an emotional player like that sometimes, though, where he can get stuck in his own head like that for certain. So we'll have to find out if uh, the French Protos has managed to get it done this time around, too. He's going to be the one spotting right here in the bottom right -hand corner of Side Delta. It's Little Drogo. And his opponent spawning up at the top left for the Shopify Rebellion. It is Lambo in the blue. And very, yeah. very lovely stuff, though. I, I really like it because you already brought up the potential for a Zealot follow-up, right? So the Tempest into like a Zealot charge all in is not an mm -hmm. uncommon style. It's not the most popular style by any stretch, but Lambo would have been... Or sorry, Void Ray Rotter into yeah, Vo a, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. a Charge Lord Yeah, yeah, not Tempest into Void. That would, that would be insane. Um, uh, Void Ray into Charge Lord is not all, is not uncommon. So that's ultimately why Lembo was pretty late right there with the Lair and all of the additional tech. Mm -hmm. And that allowed this Tempest to put in so much work. And then to transition from the Mass Tempest into Blink Stalker is also a strange transition. But I think Drogo really nailed that timing. He found his opponent before any of those important upgrades were done, because Lembo went lair with his next 100 gas, then he went into Aspire, and then he saved up resources to be able to make a big round of Corruptors. And ultimately, the result of that is that he's late with the plus one missile, and he's late with the road speed. So, honestly, really clever style right there from Drogo. I don't think there's a build similar to it on Site Delta, but we'll have to see what he's, uh, what he's gonna bring here. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to go for something like a quick void rate into charge lot all in this game after mm. being like setting the expectation and Lambo because Lambo built a fair number of roaches defensively. Uh, like you said, he delayed that layer. He delayed his drone count like he's not going to want to do that again. And if Drogo can somehow represent a certain build and then go for this like razor sharp all in i don't know man this this could get very scary for lambo but like you said i don't think there's anything really specifically on site delta that yeah. works particularly well it's just that it, it's just a map you know it's it's not like ghost river where that pocket in the back for the tempest is so powerful uh or you know, the the rocks around the third base make it uncomfortable to deal with Blink Stalkers if they can just kind of prevent surrounds easily, which they can thanks to that map terrain. Absolutely. Now, it is going to be a Stargate opener once again right here for Drogo. That is not much of a surprise, especially not on a map as big as this one. But I, uh, yeah, there's already a rally right here. You see that rally point of the, the Stargate on top of that, well, Overlord? I've got a feeling this may indeed just be a Void Ray once again. I do think Void Ray into a Charge Float all-in would be quite clever here. Any damage, though, is nice. There is the Void Ray once more. Hmm. I, I don't see him playing Tempest two games in a row. I'd be very surprised. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense on this map. I mean, it could still sort of work. <sighs> It would be oh, it'd be so crazy if he went for that. Yeah. I, I like. There is sort of a pocket where you can hit the third mineral line, and sort of threaten the main with that yeah. that dead airspace. But it's, I mean, it's not it's not bad. But yeah, it looks like we're not going to see that because we do have an oracle coming in behind this. And I do believe that Lambo checked that. Yeah, he saw that an Oracle was producing. So that's okay. That's good information for him. Okay. So really nothing all too crazy. Then we're going to see about a four minute third Nexus right here for Drogo, who just took it. Um, there are quite a few Zorklings, by the way, out on the map. And they are going to get across once more. There's that Oracle. Going to need to be used defensively. Hello. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Well, that's going to that... be a kill on that base. Or... Oh, well, really? Could we he, not have committed to it? Absolutely. 100% he could have for sure gotten that. Uh, that was... 
That was a late react, very late reaction from Drogo. Oh, but he's gonna draw. Okay, well Drogo uh. turns off the pulsar beam. Ah, but it, no, there's too much HP on it now. Oh man, yeah. this. Oh my God, this Void Ray has four drone kills. Oh. Okay, well, um, we've had a lot of drone kills, but now it comes at the cost of a Void Ray. Huh. This Couple is... of uh, sloppy moments right there for Drogo, though. He definitely is going to have to play a little bit cleaner than that. Sure, he, he got away with, with the Nexus now, but that could have been an absolute disaster for him. Honestly, it was uh, a little sloppy from both players yeah. on that Losing one. Losing four drones to a Void yeah. Ray is also kind of wild. It, it's so easy to forget how quickly Void Rays kill drones. Uh, we are going to see a nice oh, little... No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. that's huge. Oh, that's so big. Okay, well, that's okay. very good for Lambo. He's going to be really happy about that. Um, there's no air units right now. There are four adepts, and that's it. If Lambo were to decide to get it very aggressive, like, just pull the trigger, go pure roach. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't know so if Drogo could hold it. It's charge slots, by the way, as a follow-up right now, together with, well, both types of Templar, apparently. Yeah. We're going to go for Dark Templar and High Templar. So he probably wants to get some Archons going as well. Can actually morph a Dark Templar and a High, uh, a high Templar together, which we rarely see. But it's an interesting follow-up uh, follow here for Drogo, for sure. But him losing those very expensive Protoss units really does put him in a weird spot, because... Lambo can just, for the foreseeable future, do whatever he likes, right? There's not really a whole lot that... Okay, well, apparently what he likes here is making a Spire, but there's really not a whole lot that Drogo can do. But of course, Dark Templar can still catch you off guard if you're not really paying attention, so... There's always a chance. Yeah, I think these... Uh, so this is something Drogo used to do before, if, if I'm reading this correctly. Drogo used to, when he was afraid of being all-in, he would build a defensive Dark Shrine prematurely to deal mm -hmm. with like lots of hatchery tech all-ins. So uh, Dark obviously is the most well-known for them, but for a while they were super common when two Stargate Void Ray was the meta when you could transfuse Queens off creep. You could uh, you could go for these crazy strong Queen Walk builds and, and a good way to deal with it defensively was the uh, DTs. But as we can see right here, that is clearly not the plan. He is in fact going to be Trying to get some significant damage done. Ooh, if he gets the observer, oh, that's gets, uh, gets the new the new observer HP. Yeah, ten additional. Uh, yeah, seven HP. HP it would have right died there. otherwise. Not bad. Yeah. So Spire right in here finishes. We did see a defensive Phoenix or two, by the way, which is quite interesting because Drogo has not quite picked up on the exact fact of what's going on. Dark Templar, though, just simply marks oh, into man. the natural expansion. And just like that, two digits worth of workers end up going down. That's very significant. This is also going to buy a lot of time because still oh. no Muta transition just yet. He's going to recall those units out of there. And now Storm is probably going to be close to finishing up when those Mutas get towards the other side. It's still a hassle, though, right? As soon as those Mutas show up, the game still becomes very scary. But technically speaking, I think that Drogo should have all of the tools ready to defend against it. Now, keep in mind, this is not a Blink Stalker follow-up. It's been a charge opener instead. So he's not going to have an easy time chasing down those units. This is a wild play from Drogo overall, though. Getting, mm -hmm. getting Storm and DTs at the same time, uh, it feels so dangerous if against certain attacks but with what lambo is doing it is going to be so good on paper now these mutas are still unscouted there is a cannon in the main base which can help deal with the first wave but if lambo you know just clicks down probes this will yep. be tough to deal with because there's no blank by the way plus one air weapons on the back of his two right now for the zerg Ooh. player so he's probably planning on doubling down with the muta play quite a bit Lambo bringing uh, a little bit of craziness right here to game number two. Oh, drones get us around on one of the scariest units for oh. them. <laughs> Good storm here, though. Nice movement, too, by Lambo, to be fair. Like, grabbing a couple of these probes here on his way out. Not bad whatsoever. That's now 12 workers that have fallen on the side of the Protoss. Yeah, that was, uh, that was some good damage by Lambo. Uh, especially mm -hmm. considering the fact that Drogo, even though he didn't scout it, he did prepare pretty well. Now, behind this, we are going to be seeing a Hive coming on in. Oh, Lambo obviously doesn't want to lose those Mutas. Uh, yeah, Hive so is coming on in. Are going to be into Broodlords? Is that that's, the idea? I thought we were going to go Mass Muta, but... 
that's what I was wondering. If it is going to be that Broodlord transition, there is potential that it could be that. Uh, honestly, considering the fact that there's only one Robo and only three Immortals, Ultralisks wouldn't be a terrible move. They would actually yeah. be a decent move in a game like this where your opponent has uh, kind of cut robotics facility production. Not entirely, but it's it's been relatively minimized. But we'll see what uh, Lambo elects to go for. And I, th I think the more conventional move would be the Broodlords. Big Archon yeah. Blast on those mutas, but they they do find themselves 10 probes. And that, that is decent. Yeah, I think it has to be. I think it basically has to be uh, a brute or transition right now. Hive is finishing up as well as the plus one flyer attack completes, and he's just about to lose all these mutas. There they go, and immediately the Hive indeed does fire up. Lambo at this point maxed out. He's going to need to use some of those units to counter. Oh, not the banglings apparently to counter these uh, <laughs> these zealots on the left side. Oh, that Drogo is still playing a good macro game, though. All things considered, like he's playing pretty wild, and he's making some creative and unorthodox decisions, but. I mean, I, I don't know how much time he's been dedicating to this game lately, right? But we know he's been studying, and I know he got into a pretty good school, and, you know, he's been hard at work over there. And the fact that he is actually, like, this competitive is, yeah, really, really nice. It's kind of scary, actually. You know, like, mm -hmm. he, he's... He does not look like a player that is not nope. full-time. He looks very dialed in, relatively speaking. Uh... And th that is really cool to see. We are going to see the storm on the right side deflecting the main army of Lambo on the left side. I actually think there might be enough for Drogo to potentially push here, but Lambo is going to rotate a significant, actually, pretty much the whole army over there to the left. Uh, he mm -hmm. is adding on those corruptors now, so the Broodlord transition will be ready very shortly. And the he big has no problem. no supply right now, though. Like, he has no supply to make that switch. It's actually a, a bit of a scary moment because those corruptors are pretty much dead weight oh. at the moment. A little bit of a move command on the stalkers right there. We're going to see the Banes eating some huge storms. That will be a cleanup in the favor of Lambo, but that was pretty expensive still. I think you're going to be very happy about this because now he's able to trade out that supply that you were talking about and yeah. the Broodlord transition will be, will be covered since he did it on his opponent's side of the map. Yep. No, nicely done right here by Lembo. All things considered, for sure. It looked a little bit scary, but now that the Brute Lords are hitting the battlefield, the thing is, Drogo does not have a reliable counter against Brute Lords whatsoever. Like, he's got Stalkers, yeah. I guess, or Blink Stalkers, but he's got zero of the actual unit out into the battlefield. Two Queens are going to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. Um, that's unfortunate for them, I suppose, but... Now that there's Brute Lords out, like these Brute Lords alone can pretty much take on, or at least keep the entire Protoss army at bay, right? And you know, with more and more roaches now trading themselves out in favor of better units, I think this is uh, starting to look better and better right now for the German oh. Zerg, but I think still needs to be careful. Can't give away units for free. Yeah, the, uh, something I didn't even think about is the fact that all the units that pretty much died, besides a couple High Templar, for Drogo were Stalkers. Yeah. Which is was the only answer to the Broodlords. Now, Lambo's nice. still got to be a little bit careful right here because he is throwing away a lot of stuff, and his Broodlord count is not super high. Meanwhile, this drone uh, line is going to be heavily threatened. Yeah, Lambo just lost so much supply. Yes. Oh my god. Lambo just lost so much. Lambo just lost a massive amount of stuff, and I love this zealot run by here because it's dragging the entire Zerk army and all of the reinforcements back to this position. I think Drogo, upon seeing the Brute Lords now, realizes this is me going across the map. I need to get this done within the next minute or so because the Brute Lord numbers are growing. I think he should just go straight up towards the high ground. Lambo trying to see if he can maybe get his opponent to go back home too by, well, attacking and potentially forcing out the recall. But I think you can just gotta keep going, right? Do you have enough stuff though to fight these brutes? I mean, he gets underneath the two uh, that are morphing in over here. Oh, there's a lot of brood lords now. This might end up being the folly of Drogo. There's no transition into mass air or, you know, a bunch of stalkers coming in at home. Storms still can be good against broods. We can see right there that one storm does get a lot of damage done, but ah, uh, Drogo, yeah, he is, I think he's overstayed a little bit. He does have yeah. six bases right now, but Lambo will be able to get a lot of damage done to this army. Oh, cute storm, <laughs> but it does come at the cost of the High Templar. That was, that was optimistic, I think, more so than anything.
Yeah, oh. and I think Lembo is reading it correctly, by the way. Now another nice little drop. Okay, softening up a lot of these units. Lembo is reading this correctly, though. He's looking at this. He's like, okay, you are not transitioning towards air. So I'm going to try and get Lurkers going, too. Because Brute Lords, together with Lurkers, absolutely destroy Protoss Grounds. I mean, individually, they're already really powerful. I don't think he's going to need them, because these fights are all looking pretty darn good for the Zerg player. But, ah, okay. Well, oh. Hello. Hey, guys. Well, Where okay. Are we going? That's... That is in a very expensive loss right there. And Lambo just took the he just took the decisive fight that he was looking for. Drogo yep. trying to get very creative with those high Templar drops on top of the Broodlords, but Lambo's splits were very good. And that was all he really needed. Because yeah, there wasn't really a good answer to the broods. And there's still no fleet beacon transition. He is getting plus one air, but it feels like it's just it's too late at this point. Okay, we have an Immortal drop in the main base and a Void Ray transition. Brute Lords are still at low hit points, though, but there's a couple Infestors now accompanying this as well. Fungal Growth can be so... Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, walking into it, probably not so much, but Fungal Growth and Corrosive Vials, there we go, are so nice here in this scenario. I think that this will result in a win right now for the Zerk player, simply Ooh. because there's no good answer against the Brutes, and Lembo's doing a great job controlling the terrain here in the space where... He can maneuver his army around him, really ensuring that the Protoss is not going to have an easy time getting underneath him. There's one. Ooh, oh, okay. One Void Ray. Oh, goes okay. down to the Corrosive Biles. That's a, that's a painful one. Drogo had so much money in the bank. Imagine if he had yeah. just started two extra Stargates and a Fleet Beacon while he was pushing. Yeah. Now he, he does he that. Yeah. It's so late, though. There's, there's like... Lambo's even building Hydras as his anti-air. Now, I will say, hang on, I will say Lambo is going for the main instead of these outlying bases that are the fresher mining bases. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if he even realizes that those bases are taken. All the yeah. way to the top, right? Yeah, I seen one little pile on there, I guess, some time ago. There's no proper anti-air here. It's actually really unfortunate that he ended up losing that first Void Ray. I think if he, he loses oh. another one here, there's no real anti-air, right? If he would have had two yeah. Void Rays right now working away on these units, I think this could actually still be a playable game. Drogo in the meantime, by the way, on the other side of the map. A lot of Dark Templar here. Can we get a Fungal? I mean, that's the oh, only real out. detection right now. Oh. oh, no, there's a whole lot of <laughs> there's a whole lot of Overseers. Yeah, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a few behind that. Uh, this will be, oh, a snipe on the base. Drogo still has so much economy right now. Even like Lambo is, is actually getting really low on money, but it, it should just be still too much, I think. Yeah, there's... Th this has gotten a lot scarier than I ever anticipated it could. And mm -hmm. kudos to Drogo for making this chaos and, and giving himself a chance, but... Oh, blink it on top of the Broods. Yeah, the Broods are still Oh, low he gets points, all of there them. There we go, he gets all of them. I think the Roach Ravager Hydra Ball over here, though, is looking really terrifying. There is an Overseer in the mix as well. All right. Lovely work here by our Protoss oh. player, but I don't think it'll quite be enough because the supply count right now is really telling us the full story. If somehow Drogo can stabilize here, I mean, he does have those bases, two mining bases in the top right hand corner. Ah, it's nah, just that's. Yeah, it's a yeah there's. Army. But if if he did if he'd made a few different decisions at the mm -hmm. outset of that, and he played it out similarly, that is a two zero for Drogo. I'm like, even if those two void rays were actually just alive at the very end, like there's so many moving parts, obviously. But yeah, yeah. Oh, it was if a he very would have started complicated up the Stargate game. transition a little bit earlier, if he. There's so many things that could have happened in this game that actually would have given Drogo the win here, which is kind of wild because a 2 0 win for Drogo over Lembo, I think, is not really something that anybody really anticipated. But yeah, great stuff here, honestly. Really well done. But it's Lembo who evens up the score. That means that we're going to go to post youth of all maps. Yeah. Uh, I got to say, Lambo, even though he did win that game, I'm a little worried about him for game three. Like, that was, uh, mm -hmm. that was a toughie. That was a game that when you have Broodlords out against an army that doesn't have anti-air, pretty much, like, Storm yep. Archon is not it against any more than a couple Broodlords. Uh, and there was more than a couple Broodlords. And especially after you got those splits on the Broodlords, 
for that game to even feel a little messy can maybe shake your confidence a little bit. And we didn't see Lambo re-expanding. We didn't see him, you know, taking more bases after the loss of the fifth base and then the loss of the fourth. And it, it did end up being the right decision, but I hope it was a decision and not him like tunnel visioning on, I have to win the game with this army. I really mm -hmm. hope it was, okay, the right call for me is to just keep going with what I've got. You're absolutely right. So here we go. Our final game in this best of three series. Spotting right here in the top right hand corner of a map called Post Youth. We have none other than Drogo. And his opponent spawning down on the bottom left for the Shopify Rebellion. It's Lambo in the blue. And I don't want to pretend like he didn't just win this game. Like he did win this previous game. And that's obviously, you know, very mm -hmm. well done. And especially considering the fight that Drogo did put up. But that that is a, that is a game that I feel like even in victory can be weirdly... Yes. Confidence shaking. No, I, I think Lambo is actually like not happy with that win, despite the fact that it's a win. You know, he's happy that he's won the game, but not happy with the win itself. If that yeah, not happy sense. with yeah, exactly with how it went. Like the the path to get there is is not a comfortable one. Cause I'm sure he's thinking to himself, man, if he'd made a fleet beacon and two additional stargates, yes. I'm dead. You know, like or I even like if he, he just... had like one additional void ray, or if that, you know, like th those void rays ended up not getting biled. Like you need to there, there's like seven moments where Lembo got a little lucky, right? And winning mm. based off of a little bit of luck is never really the way that you especially somebody like Lembo really wants to win. So Yes. Lambo is a very methodical player who understands the game at a supremely high level. Uh so knowing that your opponent had outs against you mm -hmm. and even if they didn't take them, it's sometimes yes. almost like being too smart for your own good, you know? And and I don't want to disparage Drogo and be like, well, you didn't figure out what was going on. That was a super chaotic game where he, like, mm -hmm. shouldn't have really had a chance to win. And he was able to make it messy and to give himself those outs. Like, it was, it was him playing well, not Lambo necessarily playing poorly, that allowed him to, to get those opportunities. But at the same time, like, yeah, if Drogo, I, I really think either or, like, whether it's, you know, a few more Stargate units or it's a, a bigger transition in towards, like, Tempests, because even, like, three Tempests, when that Broodlord uh, attack gets across the map, Drogo's going to swat that away like it's nothing, and it's going to be six base to, like, four. No, absolutely. No, I, I agree with you. I, I'm actually very impressed with the way that Drogo is playing. He seems to actually... So well. um, I guess some pro gamers actually benefit quite a bit from having like really solid structure in life, right? Like when you mm. have nothing on the calendar and you just, you know, your calendar basically says, get good at StarCraft. Some <laughs> players don't actually benefit from that style all too much. And I wonder if this is the same case as well for Drogo, where he's got a couple hours to play here, a couple hours to play there. And he actually, like when he does get to play StarCraft these days, he actually puts in like 100% focus because... I really don't think he's playing a ton of SC2 at the moment because he's really busy studying, but he has clearly still got the skills. And yeah, he, he's doing a phenomenal job here. I am, um, yeah, I'm very impressed. I think he had opportunities to win game number two. He obviously ended up winning game number one with a very clever strategic game. And I can imagine that even though he lost that game, he still did some, uh, some mental damage to Lembo, right? Like going into the rest of this yeah. series, I can imagine that Lembo is going to be a bit frustrated about it all. So we'll see. Yeah, I uh, I cannot imagine a world, in fact, where Lambo isn't a little bit annoyed with that game. Now, as I as we talk about annoyances, that was a very nice little move for Lambo. Manages to bait out the Oracle's Pulsar Beam, gets the probe, which of course delays mm -hmm. the Nexus a couple extra seconds, 10, 15 seconds. And yeah, only loses, what, two links? Yeah, two links. That's obviously you're going to lose the Overlord every time. So that's that's like not even really worth talking about. Uh, especially since Lambo didn't get supply blocked, but getting that pick off, that's that's a nice way to start game number three. You're absolutely right. Twilight Council, together with a forge on the back of this right now for Drogo, so all of this is looking pretty normal. Focusing on the triple oracle this time around, so this is no void ray shenanigans or anything along mm -hmm. those lines. With triple oracle though, you definitely do want to kill a couple drones at the bare minimum, and so far, the only worker that has died has been on the side of Protos. Uh, Drogo actually misrallying probes into gas there inside of the main base. 
the secondary base, I guess, in the main. Anyways, he, yeah, that is something that needs to be solved. Yeah, that's a, that's an oopsie. That's an oopsie yep. daisy. And uh, not oopsies something. Oopsies can really become an issue, though. <laughs> yes. Yes, they can, especially since it looks like he wants to go oh. charge a lot Archon. We're going to see Drogo. Oh, cute little move right there from Lambo. Hey, <laughs> look at, oh, look at that. He, he wants to save that drone. He's like, oh, the caster said I haven't lost a drone. I, I can't lose a drone in front of him now. <laughs> I yeah. can't be disappointing like that. Uh, this Those is... two probes sleeping on the job. They think it's lunch break already, but that's not the case. That's a problem because I, my yes. feeling is that this is going to be a charge lot Archon heavy, heavily based attack. And we finally see those probes starting to mine now, but that, that took a while. That was... Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, that was a decent amount of, of missed out gas income. Fortunately, he does fix it before it becomes, you know, mission critical, but uh, every little bit does count. Absolutely. Oracles, okay. Find a couple workers over here inside of the main base. Another kind of trapped over on this left side of the map, though, and you know, he's going to be forced to recall these units away. I think you are right. This is looking like a charge slot zealot all-in, which is... A pretty powerful way of playing the game. There's the Templar Archives. Additional gateways are coming up. So he is ready. Now, in the Ooh. meantime, Lembo mixing it up too. You'll love to see it. He's going into Roaches together with Swarm Host. We saw some Swarm Host play yesterday. At the time, it was played without any sort of Nidus. I was uh, a little surprised by that. And I'm curious to see if Lembo will be the one playing a Nidus Worm here. Oh, uh, yeah, it's it's quite curious, but I don't know if he's going to get to that point. He just committed to 10 swarm hosts and Drogo. OK, he is going to be taking a fourth base. So this is not going to be an ultra dedicated attack. If it were, though, I mean, swarm hosts. Yeah, they can be really good at racking up damage over time. They can be a huge pain to deal with, but they do not provide sustained DPS. Oh, Drogo is going to get the scout. Um, yeah. But yeah, it would be scary though, because these units are like basically Drogo has been in the driver's seat of most of this series, it feels yes. like, right? Like he's been the one deciding the pacing of the game. Now it's gonna be Lambo who will be able to put on pressure. And generally speaking, in RTS games, being the aggressor is much easier than being the defender. So let's see how Drogo can handle all of this. I mean, the first locust wave does get activated. That fourth Nexus is toast. In the meantime, though, there's something going on inside yeah, of the main prism. base as well off the Zerk. Yeah, Prism Ooh. going around. Okay, it does live, but... Lambo had some Ooh. good defense. There's no recall. And like you said, this is going to be a dead fourth base. Drogo's trying to get up in towards Storm. Uh, this Ooh. is... Oh, my God. <laughs> How do horrible. you live? <laughs> Actually insane. Oh, and that one lives too. The, the yep. War Prism is able to escape out. Lambo is playing without an Evo Chamber, by the way, which is really quite intriguing. Uh, mm -hmm. He is in a fantastic position. Starts up the Hive, going to be a Hydra Den behind this, so he will be able to transition in towards Lurkers, and it is going to be a double Evo behind this. Storm's going to have to be used defensively. I think Drogo... Oh, wow, those are some big storms on the Locust, mm -hmm. but this is looking really, really rough for Drogo right now. You're absolutely right. Lurkers are the on the horizon, right? Too. So... Drogo, oh yeah, he lost the prison. Yeah, the Drogo is trying to survive, which is your main goal against this swarm host based style. And as soon as lurkers hit the battlefield, it's going to be very difficult to actually push with any of these units. So Drogo is going to be in a great spot if he manages to survive until like 100 army supply or so. But right now he's at only 29 or 35 at the end of the sentence because he's warped in a couple additional stalkers. Nah. Long story short, though, it's, it's tough for Protos here. To defend and he needs a lot more army yeah and i, I lambo's just not gonna let him get it and that is just gonna be too much 